let's look at another example using trig substitution that's a little bit more involved. So remember, with trig substitution, we're looking for um, forms that are like um, a squared minus x squared, x squared minus a squared, or a squared plus x squared um, underneath a root. And this doesn't automatically look like one of those forms, but I do have some kind of quadratic um, under a root. So I have a quadratic under a root. So if I'd like it to look like some kind of sum or difference of squares, the key algebra um, trick to use is to complete the square. So sometimes on these um, trig sub problems, you're going to have to take an initial step of completing the square to figure out what kind of form you have. So notice that I've got this t squared minus 60 plus 13. So I just want to uh, go through and remind us how we do completing the square. I'm going to take um, t here and then half of my middle term, the constant in front of my middle term, which is 3. Okay, And I want to write this um, quadratic here on the left as t minus 3 squared plus or minus some kind of additional correction term. So notice that if I expanded t minus 3 squared, this would be t squared minus 6t plus 9. So to get back 13, I'd have to add 4. Okay. So notice that t minus 3 squared plus 4 would be equal to t squared minus 6t plus 13. So this would be our completing the square form. So I can write down dt over the square root of, uh, or the integral, excuse me, of this over the square root of t squared minus 60 plus 13 as now an integral of dt over the square root of t minus 3 squared plus 4. Okay, so notice that the form that I have now, That's always what I'm asking myself first is what form. I have some kind of variable thing squared plus a number thing squared. Okay, so it doesn't matter that there's a minus 3 in here. What I have is something, some variable thing squared plus 4. And so the one that has plus in it is the a squared plus x squared form. And so let's just remind ourselves which trig functions go with each of these. Remember the a squared minus x squared? That went with um, a sine theta because of the connection with 1 minus sine squared, x squared minus a squared, but with secant theta because of the connection to secant squared minus 1 being equal to tan squared, and a squared plus x squared went with tan theta. Okay, since we know that 1 plus tan squared theta equals secant squared theta. One other little memory trick for remembering that tangent goes with the plus one is you can think of plus and t as being you know, the same kind of thing. So we have, oops, I wanted to write, do that in red. So I have a squared plus x squared, and then I have the t for tangent substitution with that. Okay, so that could be one way to remember how tangent goes with that particular form. So we know what form we have. So now we have to think about writing down our trig substitution. So we figured out the form. Um, now we need to do the trig sub. Actually set it up. So notice that here it's not that I specifically have x squared, but I have something being squared. So instead of writing x on the left-hand side, I'm going to write the whole variable thing that's being squared. I'll write t minus 3, that's like my, quote, x, and then this is going to be equal to a times tan theta. Well, my a here is 2, since I've got plus 4 or plus 2 squared. So this is going to be 2 tan theta. So that's my initial setup. Um, you could also have um, done a u substitution on this first, if that helps you out, and let u be t minus 3. Um, and then du would be dt, and then you'd have u squared plus 4 here, and then u would be equal to 2 tan theta, where u is equal to t minus 3. So we can skip the u sub and go straight to just t minus 3 equals 2 tan theta, but you also have the option to do a u sub there. That helps you see that form a little bit better. Okay. 
So notice that if t minus 3 is 2 tan theta, that means t equals 3 plus 2 tan theta. And then I need to figure out what dt is. And as the derivative of 3 would just be 0, so I'll have 2 times the derivative of tangent, which is secant squared. And I don't want to leave off my d theta there. Okay, so now I'm ready to rewrite my integral. So I'm going to have this integral of dt, which is 2 secant squared theta d theta here. And this is all over the square root of t minus 3 squared. Well, t minus 3 is 2 tan theta, so t minus 3 squared would be 2 tan theta quantity squared, or 4 tan squared theta. And then I have plus 4 in there. Okay. Um, remember that we are noting that theta is between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2 here. Okay. So let's go ahead. What's the next step here? So we had to do figure out the form. We had to um, set up our trig substitution. We did the, um, the rewriting the integral step. Remember that the next step is now we want to use our Pythagorean identity. Okay. Since we're using the tangent substitution, we're using the identity tan squared plus 1 equals secant squared theta, okay? So I've got under my square root here 4 tan squared theta plus 4. So I could come over to the side and just do a little bit of algebra with that. I could say 4 tan squared theta plus 4 equals 4 times tan squared theta plus 1. And then I know that this tan squared theta plus 1 here is secant squared. So I see how I can replace 4 tan squared theta plus 4 with 4 secant squared theta. Okay. So we have our integral here, 2 secant squared theta d theta. This is all over the square root of 4 secant squared theta. You want to be careful not to do too many steps at once in these problems, because um, it would be very easy to just write 4 secant squared theta here without the square root, um, or various little things like that that could mess up the next couple of steps for you. So it's good to write a few more in between steps, make sure you don't miss anything. So now I can take the square root of this and I do get 2 secant theta by taking the square root of 4 and the square root of secant squared theta, because again in the interval that we're talking about, between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2, secant, which is 1 over cosine, will always be positive. Okay, so now I can do the step where I simplify. So I've used the identity, we've done a little bit of simplifying. Depending on the problem, the simplifying step could take you, you know, a few steps to go through. But we do end up here with just integrating secant theta now since the secant squared theta over secant theta is, excuse me, just secant theta. So now this is one of our antiderivative rules. Okay, so this is why it's so important that you know your antiderivative rules. You don't want to get up to this point in a problem, have done so much work, and then be stuck because you forget what the antiderivative rule is. So we know that this is log of the absolute value of secant theta plus tan theta plus c. And again, we know we're not done because my original question was asking for an integral of something with respect to t. So I need to go convert this from theta back to t. So we're not done. We got to use the triangle. So I had started with t minus 3 equals 2 tangent theta. Okay, so I know that t minus 3 over 2 is equal to tangent theta. So that is going to take care of this part, but then I need to figure out what secant theta is in terms of t. So that's why I got to draw the triangle. So I have my right triangle here. Tangent theta is t minus 3 over 2, so that's opposite over adjacent. The square root that I'm going to have will be 4 plus t minus 3 squared. So now we can write our final answer here in terms of x. So I'm going to have log 
the absolute value of secant theta, which for my triangle I see is going to be the square root of 4 plus t minus 3 squared over 2, since secant theta will be um, hypotenuse over adjacent. Then I'm going to have tangent theta, which is t minus 3 over 2 plus c. And so this is equal to the integral we were trying to find, which was the integral of dt over the square root of t squared minus 6t plus 13.